I agree. I mean, I, I think, Bob, you, you raised a good valid point, and I think, Darius, it's just a matter of changing the heading of the agreements. Yeah, we can, I, I think we, yeah, I think we can do a vote out of this saying to, you know, make it five separate agreement for each district um, that, you know, and if, hopefully if we all agree, it can be an unanimous agreement to, for each of the districts, so. There is, oh. was Emily on with us today? No. In fact, I emailed her this morning to talk and she didn't write back, so I don't know what's going on there. Okay. Um, so, Duck season. <laughs> Sorry. So, Bob, did you have, uh, Mr. Decker, did you have any other? I, the, the main thing is the five agreements and you should, uh, vote this thing so it continues as long as the emergency declaration is applicable and the schools are closed okay so in other words it says, it says the right? parties under this memorandum of moa this agreement is only effective during the period covered by the state of emergency related to COVID 19. so but, that, that's the duration of the state of emergency is how i read right. it but, but bobby i mean uh, darius and the other thing you sent us right it talked about an effective date it well, said uh, March 16th through April 3rd. Well, so, well, so, okay, that's a good point, Bob. Let me explain that to people. So we have two different things we're discussing today. The first one is the our, our unions, our A and C unions at both um, 38 and at Frontier, and that's the MOA we're discussing first. The next issue that we're going to have is we're going to talk about employees the non-union personnel, what we're doing. And on that, we are only talking about going to April 3rd. And the reason why we're being dis being clear about that is the fact that we had money issues on some of the people um, that are supported by revolving funds. And, you know, and so where we're looking for is um, recommendation to do the payment through um, April 3rd. And when we get to that topic, we'll talk about how because there's revolving funds in the after school program and the preschool program, the committee may have to be um, may have to we may have to make decisions in regards to letting people um, letting people go and um, during the time period because we don't have the money to pay them or we have to go deplete res any reserves we have um, in order to pay them. And that's that's kind of the heavier discussion today, to be honest with you. The MOA, I think, is pretty straightforward. Um, but the, uh, the the real concern is that other section that we'll get onto um, the next part of the agenda. Those employees are employed by the towns, not by Frontier. Am I correct? You talk about the after school program and the before school program. They are employed um, by Frontier. They are employed by Central Office. All right. Well, let they're me paid, talk. They're paid for it through the towns. So, yeah, I mean, you're, it's kind of a loaded question. I mean, towns are paying the bills, but I do all the um, hiring, firing letters of them and the HR of them. So I believe it's under the control of the central office. And Shelly, please jump in if you. Um, so that's actually Frontier controls it. Because they're paid with Frontier funds and it's reimbursed. They're not the Frontier. No, they're not paid with Frontier funds. They're paid by elementary, each elementary school. I'm sorry. Each elementary school controls their um, their budgeted of their out of school times in preschool is, is part of their um, budgets. So there, it's the elementary level. All right, so it doesn't affect the frontier appropriation or the frontier balance sheet. Correct. Okay. I don't have any other huge problems. I just want to make sure that we make everybody comfortable and. You know, what have you? I just trying to think long range. Okay. We went to executive session for that. <laughs> so, this is Trevor. I would make a motion to approve um, the the amended MO. So you're gonna come, the you're gonna come out of executive. executive. Can I ask a question first before we go out of executive session. Darius, when and how would those affected employees who won't be paid past April 3rd be notified? We have, we would have to, we'd have to make a decision. So right now, according to the facts that we have to us, we're coming back on April 6th. 
Okay, while those facts are, you know, I think the state is probably purposely dra dragging its feet because it's trying to figure out what's going to do with education if we have to go through the remainder of spring um, and the amount of questions that that spring springs up um, if we if we go that route. So um, right now, we the facts in front of us is that we're returning April sixth. That we I think we all know that's not happening. So. Um, if we extend beyond the April 6th, which is really the April 3rd workday, um, you know, uh, there's, you know, there's a, obviously the budget problems that we're going to have with those groups. So when do we notify them? As soon as we make a decision on what we're going to do after April 3rd or April 6th um, date, and we don't know if we're closed. Um, so it's kind of, we're kind of in a tough spot. Um, you know, there also, you know, this is something that we'll talk about, probably have to talk about again in, in the regular session, but, you know, there's questions of whether or not we continue paying benefits. And then we, you know, there's some research we have to do on our end of what that looks like. If they go to unemployment, but we keep their benefits, how can we can do that? Um, I got to kind of look in the legality of all that. Um, but it was kind of early on was this kind of hope that we would be able to pay everybody through this whole process kind of, you know, because it is budgeted, but when we start looking at those revolving accounts, you're also talking about cafeteria, that's still working. Um, however, we can't afford to keep them, all of them working. They're kind of working um, staggered times and tr trying to keep them all busy and, and rotating, but we're certainly not just get, overpaying them, we're paying them for, for staying home right now as part of the cafeteria. So um, so you got the cafeteria out of school time and your preschool and preschool gets even more complicated because they're union. The teachers are union, the IAs are union, they're working in there. And, and Shelly, please jump in if I if I misstep anywhere in here. Um, but those are some big bills. If we go to the end of June paying all those, we will be in some hurting, some schools will be hurting more than others, but we will be depleting all our reserves in those accounts or close to depleting. And we can um, do the math out of what that's gonna look like. So when we go to talk about the non-union people, it really is about the next two weeks. And then I think, we turn a corner after two weeks and, and probably have to uh, be a little bit more aggressive in, in protecting the finances of the district um, when we get to that. So that kind of answers your, doesn't really answer your question, Jessica, but it kind of tells you that as soon as we have a decision on that, we can, we'll can we notify them. Um, and I think when we discuss this in open meeting, it's going to be kind of clear that another decision will be upcoming, which will cause anxiety in their lives, I imagine. But I'm not sure. It's it's. I don't know how we protect them in that area. Darius, I got a question. Can I jump in? Go ahead, Sharon. Yep. <laughs> My question is, you know, other businesses laying off people. So we do have non-union hourly employees and today with the governor saying that stay at home not a shelter in place but stay at home we're going to have more people in this building here will say are going to be staying home starting tomorrow correct correct so i mean if we're if we're, we love to pay everybody everything that's due to them but if other businesses and we'll call our school as a business here because you have to pay people. Are we going to, we, should we be looking at laying off? And it's not going to take long the way the governor's saying that we're not going to have that one week wait time. And granted, there's a lot of people applying for unemployment benefits, but we may have to look at that. I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. If, if I'm wrong, then somebody chime in and tell me I'm wrong. But, you know, if we're trying to look at worst case scenario, I think you're so. I think you're 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 spot on in the sense that we have to we have to make a decision. We can't let the decision make itself by moving forward. Either we're going to commit to going in and and we'll provide those numbers. I think that's to be honest, I think that's the next meeting decision because um, I can be able to provide you guys with the data of how much it's going to cost based on what we can project as the end of the school year. And I'm hoping by the end of this week, we're going to have an idea. You know, I hope the state doesn't wait till Wednesday or Thursday of the third week of this to decide that we're not going to go while, while, we'll st while we're all sitting at home in, in a state of emergency um, before they make a decision about the, the longer closure. Um, 
but I also understand what Jessica is saying is, I think she was saying, I'm reading into your question, Jessica, but you're saying, you know, we have a responsibility to our employees to give them as much heads up as possible so that they can plan appropriately. Um, we're kind of stuck between the balance of the two there um, and, and how far we can go on in paying them. Um, Sheila, do you want to just kind of chime in about your thoughts on the reserves of getting through the next two weeks? Sure, no problem. Um, so I think our out of school time at all four elementary schools have healthy balances in their accounts that rolled over from uh, 6 30 19. I do not think there is an issue with paying those staff, which there's about 20 of them that are part time hourly employees. I don't think it's a problem to continue to pay them through this two week period that's left. They've already gotten paid for this week. So we're looking at two more weeks. Um, beyond that, I, I do think we have to consider whether or not we lay them off. I, I think we're at risk of depleting those accounts and um, we don't know what the budgets are going to look like for next year. So we need to make sure that we, that we have reserves. I don't think it's just for out of school time though. I think it's also for cafeteria that we're looking at those options. And we are asking the cafeteria folks to work some still. We are still paying them for their full hours. That might be something that we have to reconsider because they're all paid from revolving funds without revenue coming in at this point. And unless the state says that we qualify for reimbursement, um, we're at a complete loss at school lunch as well. And then Darius uh, mentioned early childhood being the other consideration. They also have no tuition coming in right now. Uh, most of our accounts are healthy. I'm, I'm most concerned about Deerfield and then Deerfield's small balance that rolled over from last fiscal year. So we're going to have to look at other funding sources because those early childhood staff, they are on union contracts. So we will have to continue to pay them. Um, but I would definitely encourage us to get our out of school time and our cafeteria folks that are paid from other revolving funds through the next two weeks. I think it's going to go a long way for the health of our community and trying to take care of people as long as we can and then we reassess. I, I think the one other revenue stream that um, is kind of being held in the back, it's going to be what Trevor's about to say, I bet, is that there is emergency funding um, that may be to be able to take care of some of those cafeteria people afterwards. But Yes, they are, they are critical, I think, as far as feeding our children and, um, and possibly seniors in the future. Um, we, we just we voted last uh, yesterday to continue paying our people in the meantime, um, you know, at least two weeks out until we can figure out where we're going to be long, long term. But um, I, I just I think the, the cafeteria is critical at the moment, um, unless, you know, we get a full shut in and no one could leave anywhere. We still have to get food to, to people. It's considered, um, so basically, did, we probably at, at some point have to come back out of executive session just because we're kind of creeping down um, outside of the union yeah. kind of things, just FYI. Um, yep. So I, I put that back to the chairs, but I, I, I maybe we should do that, I, and then we can. I have, I, have a, I have a question. I think if you, the drop dead date to pay these people is uh, going to be the, the 3rd of April for all right, and I think that you're going to probably have to terminate them, but they have certain COBRA benefits, I believe, relative to their health insurance and what have you, and I'm not sure what the extent of that is, but we're going to have to, if we decide to terminate those people where applicable, you're going to have to go through the right, right and proper notices to each one of them and the COBRA benefits, et cetera. I mean, so I don't can like I jump it. in a second on that? Um, we're talking about people that are not benefit eligible. They work less than 20 hours a week. Okay. Well, that's, that's good to know. All mm -hmm. right. But I, I'm just trying to make sure we do everything right and try to make things as palatable as we can for the people. If I may jump in here for a second. I, Bob, I appreciate the COBRA um, statement and notification, et cetera. I'd like to see it. I know I realize the towns pay the individual health insurance benefits, but I'd like to see if there's some way, if we are back into a corner and are laying off people that are benefited, that perhaps those benefits can be retained um, in, in some manner, shape or form. I, I realize that falls more on the board of selectmen and 
than mo in the towns. But uh, from from my perspective, if there's any way to maintain that while we're these people are laid off due to the circumstances, that would be great. Thanks. Well, we we don't know all the facts, Ken. If Shelley puts together it, the summary of of these things and what have you, we have another meeting in a few days, then we can vote to authorize and what have you, when we figured out everything. It doesn't affect Frontier that much, although Frontier pays all, pays what, 75% of the insurance or somewhere in that range. So um, where in your, your case, the towns are involved and you have to negotiate with the selectmen. But I just think we need to know all the facts and circumstances before we make long-term commitments. Correct. I don't want to lead anybody that we're going to take care of and we we may not have the ability to do it yeah well that's i mean that's what darius has been saying is you know we've got two weeks still to go before we're sort of at a, as you said a drop dead date so um i trust that they're going to continue working on this and we'll have the answers before we have another meeting so thanks bob any other questions out there i think we Mike can go out of executive right. session Michael Merritt asked to ask if you could ask a question. I think you need to jump right in, Mike. So I was just to see if the state had offered any monies to, uh, you know, like districts like us or to maintain people instead of <laughs> having to force them onto unemployment. No, they haven't. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll move for the union. To leave executive second. I'll second it. That Trevor. Judy, you got you got the first and second. You need a roll call. Yeah, I got the first and the second. Yep. Okay. okay. We'll do a quick roll call. Is this voting members only or everybody? It's only voting everybody. members, Bobby. Okay. Well, no, we're not voting on anything. We're just coming out. Right? I have to have everyone coming out. Um, so, uh, Elaine from Conway, Elaine, you still there? Yes, fine. Okay, thank you. Michael Merritt? Yes. Yep. Ashley Dion? She wasn't in there before. What's that? She's not here. I didn't think so. Uh, Philip's not here. Denise Storm. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Gregory wasn't here. Peter Gagarin. Yes. Maisie Shaw. Can't remember if she was here. She's not, is she? No. Uh, Keith McFarland. Yes. 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 McFarland. Yes. I'm not working off the alphabetical list. Sorry, folks. Kenneth Cutterback, yes. David Sharp. Yes. Trevor McDaniel. Yes, Trevor Mc Yes, Trevor McDaniel. Mary Raymond. Yes. Terry Etchels. Yep. I saw that Katie Edwards had signed out. So uh, Robert Holla. Yep. Maureen Nichols. I saw the mute go off, so I'm assuming she said yes. Maureen, is you there? She 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 was on. She's unmuting, but she's not. Can you audible. type? Can you type? Well, we're out of executive session at 1247. Move for Frontier. Uh, second. Maureen said yes. Thank you. You want to do a roll call, Judy, since you probably have a list in front of you, baby, that we're here? I yep. don't have one. Chair, Chair Robert Halla? Yes. Uh, Bob Decker? Yes. Keith McFarland? Yes. Damien Fosnott. Yes. Mary Raymond. Yes. Judy Pierce. Yes. Olivia Leone. Yep. Yep. Okay. All set. 
All right, I'm going to be now putting us back to streaming. <laughs> Are we going to invite uh, Allison? I texted Allison and told her to join us back. Okay. Just for clarification, this is Trevor. I'm signing off and I'm going to sign in on a different phone for clarity. Yep. Yep. All right. I said no to Allison, so she'll see if she joins us. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I move that we approve an agreement between the Frontier Regional School District School Committee and the uh, personnel, all non union personnel regarding, and the other agreement, uh, also, I haven't got it in front of me, uh, and the other agreement, uh, and what have you, that there be separate agreements is between Frontier and the respective teachers' associations. Let That's all line. You got that, Judy? No, 100% no. We didn't vote to split it up, right? It was presented as a single document. In Do we have to vote in this open session to make it five agreements and then approve we them? Well, I'm just making a motion for Frontier because I wouldn't try to tell the unions what to do. That's fine, but it's still just one agreement right now, Bob. So we haven't amended anything. Approve one agreement between Frontier Region and the applicable teachers associations. It's so, separate and distinct. Right. I, I, I think that the, just for clarity, I think the Frontier Group could vote to approve the um, MOA as presented, but to be um, to be declared that between the Frontier Committee and the Frontier Union, a separate you know be a separate agreement not to be combined, and then Union Thirty Eight could do a vote to do the same to not be combined with Frontier, and then because um, you know basically that's how we do the contract with Union Thirty Eight. Um, then we will do the document for each of the four districts of Union 38. That, Could I that's suggest, what I want. Yeah, Darius, why don't you, or Bob, why don't, the motion should be, be motion to approve Frontier Regional the School District Committee, a memorandum of agreement between the Frontier Regional District School Committee and Frontier Regional Teachers Association and Assistance Association units A and C. Hello, say it again. Ken. So moved. No, stop. Take the, take the title off the document and it says Frontier Regional School District Committee. Stop. I'll go back and read it, that's fine. And then just take the second half of the and underneath the and. And then when we do the Union 38, we will um, to your motion. And the chairman be allowed to sign the uh, contracts as applicable. So on the roll call for for Frontier, is it just... Oh, this doesn't have to be a roll call. We're out of executive session, okay. Bobby. Do we have to do voting members only? Yes. Okay. Well, Frontier's everybody. Here's everybody. Yeah, yeah. So you're okay. Well, yeah, I'm just. But she might want to. She might want to do a roll call simply because she might have to because of the way it vote if there was an issue. You might want to just do the roll call. Before we do that, Doesn't. can we get a second on this motion? Frontier. Who did the Who did the original? I, I made the motion. I'll I'll make the second. Thank oh, excuse me, Olivia did. Thank you, Olivia. Sorry, Olivia. <laughs> you do need to do roll call votes on everything online. Sorry. That's all right. You could do it. Okay, roll call vote. Chair Bob Halla. Yes. Robert Decker. Yes. Keith McFarland. Yes. Uh, Damien. Yes. Mary Raymond. Yes. Judy Pierce. Yes. Olivia Leone. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Union 38, your turn. So I'll entertain a motion 
for the union, uh, the memorandum to approve the memorandum of agreement between the Union 38 school committees and the Union 38 Teachers Association and Instructional Assistance Associations, as written. Do we have to worry about what Bob was saying about having four different ones? Or is okay. that going to be afterwards? By, by blanketing with the union number 38 school committees, I think that author, I, I would think that author, I just has to turn it into because they are four distinct committees. Gotcha. And we'd make each one for the towns. I'll second Ken's motion. All right. Now this is voting members only, correct? It is correct. So I will call out voting member names. Elaine Campbell. Still yes. there? Okay. Yep. Michael Merritt. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Peter Gigaren. Yes. Jessica Corwin. Yes. Ken Cutterback. Yes. David Sharp. Yes. Trevor McDaniel. Is he back on? I think he did. But I don't hear him. Um, yes, Trevor McDaniel, oh, yes. Thanks, Trevor. Thank uh, Katie had signed off. I haven't seen that she's come back on. So Bob Holla. Yes. Maureen Nichols. Maureen still on? Yes. Yep. Yes. Very good, thank you. Do we have anything else to come up? Uh, we've got the second document. To... Oh Lord. Well, same, the most that we make that motion to approve it with a separate agreement for Frontier with the respective association. Authorize the school committee chairman to sign, a, sign whatever it has to be signed. So nothing has to be signed on this um, and to be, to be blunt, the, it actually falls within my purview to do it, but it is one of those things where it, it does affect the budgets, where it does push it back to you guys. So um, I think you're just basically looking at the agreement for not all non-union personnel improved through, um, through April 3rd as presented. Just note that a lot of these things have changed this morning when the governor changed from, um, changed the stay at home policy. So we kind of went through, um, we went through and put lines through it all this morning. So if you read it last night, it changed this morning because we were having some people working from, some people were coming into work and some people were doing a, a mix between working remotely and coming to work. And we just kind of uh, changed it to all remotely. And then some folks, um, you know, can't, you know, can't work remotely on their job and will be um, paid for those the next two weeks. Bob, you made the motion. I'll second it for Frontier. Thank you. Are we going to do a roll call vote or are we just going to call it a day? Well, you got to have a roll call because he, Jerry said this yeah. virtual. Yeah, every virtual roll call. roll call. They weren't expecting a 26 member committee. Yeah. Okay. So, Bob Mauer? Yes. Robert Decker? Yes. Keith McFarlane? Yes. Damien? Yes. Mary Raymond? Yes. Judy, yes. Olivia? Yeah. Okay. All right. Union 38. No, that's Frontier. No, no, no. I know. Now I'm calling for <laughs> Union 38. Sorry. Uh, motion to uh, approve the agreement between Union 38 school committees and all non union personnel uh, through April 3rd, 2020, as written. Second. Second. Well, go ahead, Dave. Trevor. <clears throat> You got it, Judy? Yep, I do, yep. Roll call again. I'm assuming no more discussion. Elaine? Campbell? Yes. Michael yes. Merritt? Yes. Philip, uh, Philip's not here. <laughs> Peter DeGaren? Yes. Jessica Corwin? Still there? Yes, sorry. Okay, Ken Cutterback, yes. David Sharp? Yes. Trevor McDaniel? Yes. Katie, Katie's not here. Bob Holla? Yes, sir. Maureen Nichols. If we get her typed in here, 
she's still on. <clears throat> yes. yes. Okay. Thank you all. Is there anything else you need to talk about before we get out? So let me just kind of give you the, uh, uh, just real briefly. So what I'm going to probably put together is a meeting for next week, early next week, in which I can give you the next update um, from the commissioner's office. Um, it's already been, we've been on for an hour, so I, I won't go through the small updates that have happened since last Friday. Um, it really, hang on, I got to mute somebody here and they're trying to talk over me. Oh, dear there. Um, so, um, so uh, you know, I'll try to set up early next week where we also can have conversations regarding the, um, regarding what we're going to do with, with, you know, the accounts that have uh, money coming in, the uh, uh, revenue accounts that are paying people and what we're going to do there as well as um, we need to have a conversation regarding the bus contract i did have a conversation with grip Go company on thursday we're waiting for some guidance from the state um but i've also asked if um if there's any members of the school committee um that want to help in that regards because it is going to be negotiating a contract that has to eventually be approved by the school committee um looking for um some help in that area there. You want me to help you with with the um, with writing and over there, or when the time comes? Sure. Yeah. What I'll do is I just to have review it before bring it before the whole community to make sure the help with the you know basically bargaining with the bus company what we're doing there. I am waiting right now on some more guidance from the state. It's with the Department of Revenue right now, and they're gonna. I'm told that be prepared to negotiate at the local level because they'll probably kick it back to us. Um, but we're waiting for an, an answer from the Department of Revenue at that point. Um, I also heard from the DESE commissioner. He said, well, we're, we are still waiting to go to, you know, uh, April 6th, 6, but be start preparing to go longer. So he basically kind of, you know, you know it, the com uh, commissioner of education doesn't close schools, the governor does, or the local school committee does with the power of the superintendent. So um, we'll be waiting on that as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my update. If there's any questions in general to me about how, what things are going on that's been bugging people, I can answer those questions as well. And please feel free to hit me with emails. I am working, um, you know, obviously on my emails all day long. So, or call me and we can have a phone call. I just, saw, right. I just saw Massey just um, joined in. Um, let me want, you want to just talk to her for one second, just let her know. That I can catch you. Yeah, I can catch Maisie up afterwards. I think keeping all twenty of us on for so, someone to come in late, we can do that. Darius, if you could just uh, put a little outline together with the bullets as what's up to date. Bing, 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 Bing. Uh, nothing, nothing extensive, so everybody understands everything. So yeah, doesn't have to be done today, but just you know, bullets. Yep. Update summary. Sure. All right. So, we all appreciate all your efforts. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, only other, the only other thing I want to throw one more thing out there is that the you know the towns are concerned about next year's finances. Um, I think we're going to wait and see what happens this week, but just let everybody know we may have to have more talks regarding our budgets for next year, um, including Frontier, that, you know, depending on you know the economic impact of this overall. So th then that's not going to be a joint meeting. There will be individuals for each town, but I'm just kind of putting it out there as if members of the community are talking about what does this mean for next year's budget. Um, I don't know what it means, but it depends on where we're going to get, you know, funding, federal funding and whatnot. You know, we'll, we'll, uh, it's, we'll see, but I just all, wanted to put it on people's radar that it's, there's concern there in the town governments. It's a roll of the dice. Yeah. For the union, do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. Motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All right. You got to do a roll call. <laughs> so we'll go through a roll call one more time. Uh, all in favor, uh, Elaine? Yes. Michael? Yes. Ashley? Not here. Not here, that's right. Denise? Storm? <clears throat> Peter DeGarren? Yes. Uh, Mate? Maisie made a different time to vote on an adjournment. <laughs> yes. Keith McFarland. Yes. Jessica Corwin. Yes. 
Ken Cutterback, yes. David Sharp. Yes. Trevor McDaniels. Yes. Thank you. Mary Raymond. Yes. Gary Gary Etchell. Uh, she's not here. Um, Katie, I think, is still gone. Bob Halla. Yes. Maureen Nichols. And Carrie's. And she said yes. Carrie said yes. Okay, thank you all. I Once move again, for Frontier. I'll second it. You want to do roll call, Judy? Sorry. No, it's okay. I was on mute. That's fine. Um, I don't even know. Bob? Yeah. Uh, Halla? Yes. Bob Decker? Yes. Keith? Yes. Damien? Yes. Mary? Yes. Judy? Yes. Olivia? Yep. Okay. We're adjourned.